All right, everybody. This is Brody VG Clouds. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit, little video on a uh, building today. I know everybody wants to chuck clouds and you know build their rebuildable the best they can using what they've got. So to start it off, first you're gonna need a mechanical mod. It's right here. It's called a Morpheus. Uh, it's imported from the Philippines. It's got copper pins, brass connections. Uh, any mechanical mod works, whether it's made of copper, brass, steel, aluminum. So it's a mechanical mod, it doesn't have any computer chips or anything like that in there. So a variable voltage won't work for sub-ohms, but it will work for 1.5 and up. So you can wrap it, but you won't get the same, same effect out of it. Next off, you need an RDA or RBA. RBA is a tank style. Uh, it, it's got a little tank and you drop your wick. Usually people use stainless steel mesh, and then you wrap your coil around that. Me, I tend to use RDAs. It's a dripper style. And right here, we're going to be building on a trident today. So as you can tell, inside of the trident, you've got wick, you've got wire, all kind of built up on those three posts right there. So we're going to go with that. So first off, when you're rebuilding, I'm going to go ahead and take mine apart right now. Unloosen your set screws. I like the tri-post because it allows you to do a dual coil a little bit better. It gives you a little bit more ample room inside of the coil. And your old ones, you can just rip them out, take them off, wipe out any residual juice in there. That way you're not getting you know, mixing flavors in it. You can wash it off with alcohol, wash it off with hot water. And if you use water, rinse it off, be sure to. So, as you can tell, it's got three posts. And you can kind of tell that there's holes in the sides of the posts. So we're going to be working with today. So there's many different types of wick and wire. I tend to use what you call flat wire. It's a ribbon. It looks a lot like Christmas tinsel. You can kind of see it there. It's real shiny and Salt Lake Vapors. It's where I get all my good stuff. Uh, they carry all different sizes of wick, wire, eco wool, silica. And that's another thing we're going to be working with is wick. This right here is Eco Wool. I got this from Imrati Goldman on Instagram. Uh, it's silica infused Eco Wool, so it holds moisture very well as well as providing a very good flavor. So we're using that today. That's two millimeter. When I build, I like to have a total of six. So if it's two mil, you want three fold. If it's one mil, you want six folds. If it's three mil, you want two folds, so on and so forth. So we're going to start it off by taking a length, probably three, maybe four inches, and fold that in half. And you've got about the right amount. You can do it a little bit differently. And take and fold one coil, and you've got your, your three folds of your wick, and then that's the same length as the other side. So we'll cut this in half. Anytime you're rebuilding, you want to have a good set of Diagonal cutters, a set of needle nose pliers, and a couple little really small flathead screwdrivers. And then whatever your connections are, whether they are Phillips head, Allen wrench, or flathead, you want to have a set of that laying around as well so you can you know, tighten your post down. Okay, now that I've got my strands, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat wire. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to take the wick and I'm going to fold it once in the middle like an envelope right there. So you get your three folds and you want to keep it in kind of a cylindrical pattern. That way when you wrap your coil, it's actually in a round instead of being flat. Holds moisture better. Uh, your coil wraps easier. And I'll start it out if you take your fingers and you place the wire between your index finger and the wick. So it's on the back side. And then I'll take it and I will wrap it in a uniform, very equal distance, whatever that word is. Go ahead and criticize me for it. And then I'll over wrap it with this flat ribbon. Just because uh, this flat ribbon doesn't bend very well. So if you over wrap it, bam, springs back into place. So right here we've got a coil. Let me tighten this up so I can show you. Okay. 
So right there you've got your coil. It's pretty straightforward, pretty basic. It kind of went a little flat on me. I'll reshape it as I put it on the post. So you pull that tight. And you go ahead and build your second one. Fold, fold. Hold the wire on the back side. Nice smooth wrap around it. Trying to keep equal distance between the wires. Because the more equal distance you can keep, the better it'll heat up. It'll conduct electricity and be a smoother heating process. Just pull this one tight a little bit. Just kind of grab it, holding it by the middle. Go ahead and pull one leg, pull the other. Don't pull them super tight because you'll pull the wire right up, right between your fingers. As you can tell, that one's a little bit more cylindrical. Decently spaced, and if it, that side's a little bit better. And if they're not spaced correctly, right off the get-go, you can always use your little flathead screwdriver, straighten them out once they're on the post. <clears throat> So then you'll notice you'll have one on top, one on bottom with your coil that you just wrapped. And if you look at your posts, most rebuildables, the posts, you'll have your center and your two outsides, your, your negatives. And your center is going to be a little bit higher up the whole wheel than your negatives. So I like to take the top and put that in that center post, your positive. So you get one in the center. And then I work to, I like to work on the left side. That way I can see exactly what I'm doing without my big old fat fingers getting in the way. And this flat ribbon sometimes bends on you and gets caught in the post a little bit. So if you take your caps off or your set screws out a little bit, it usually helps. Okay, now I've got one side done. It's kind of hard to tell in this lighting, I apologize. And I'm not going to have it sucked super close to the post quite yet. It's just kind of floating in there. And with it just kind of floating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly tighten down my outside. Because your outsides are only going to get one wire in them when you're doing a dual coil. So that allows the positive, your center one, to move a little bit. So you can put the other wire through without getting any binding. And then I'll take my other side and I will start this one as well. And again with this flat wire it's a little bit trickier to fit two pieces of flat wire inside the posts. So you just got to be a little bit more patient than you would with you know 28 or 30 gauge candle or whatever you choose to use. And I use 0.6 because a lot of different atomizers can handle a 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is a little bit wider, but some of them I've noticed you can't fit the 0 0.8, so you have to use 0 0.6. So I tend to use 0 0.6. I hold that on hand just in case I have buddies that want to come over and build or want me to build a custom for them. Then I can, you know, ensure that it fits in theirs. And as I said, patience is key when it comes to this flat ribbon. And if you take your fingernails and you pull on these wires a little bit, straightens them right back out. Try it again. Okay, got the second set through. So they're just kind of floating free in there. I'm gonna pull the legs of the wires up and out of the way so they don't get caught in the wick of the opposing coil. And it's a little bit trickier with flat wire when they crisscross. With canthal it's a lot smoother, it's round, you know. So then I will gradually take my pliers and I will grab the two legs of one of the coils and I will pull that whole coil in. And in doing so by taking two at a time then you're gonna suck the whole thing in. So you want to gradually grab both of them and slowly tighten them up. And 
And if you're having any difficulty, loosen them up even further. But mine, I'm working with caps on the top. They're not quite set screws that go down through the middle, so the caps could fall off, or your set screws could come out. So don't, don't loosen them up too much. You'll lose everything. Okay, once you've got, got them cinched, them cinched down a decent ways, what I like to do is I like to do a slow tightening of the center post because you're working with two different wires in your center. And again, this is for dual coil only. If you're doing single coil, it's a lot easier. So once I get those center ones cinched down, I'm going to tighten my cap just to hold them in place. It's not a final tightening. It's going to hold those in place. So then as you see right there, I've got pretty much sucked into the posts. Now I'm going to work the outside ones. These ones you can pull on them a little bit harder, a little bit tighter. That way, uh, when you suck it tight, you're actually shortening the distance of the wire that you're using. And the shorter the distance, the better uh, vaporizing it's going to do. It's going to get hotter. So as long as you pull them tight, you can shorten the distance of the actual wire. And right now I'm doing a 3-4 wrap. If you didn't notice, 3-4 wrap. Uh, I've tried two threes, I've tried four fives, I've tried five sixes, whatever you know, whatever you want. And I find that this burns the best. It's not too harsh, but it gives sufficient amount of heat to you know burn off any excess juice, to fire off your dry coil, you know, whatever you need to do. So now that I've got them all tightened down, you can loosen the caps and go one more round, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. Just because I like mine cinched really tight. And when doing the center post, you're going to want to put your thumb and index finger on the sides to ensure that it doesn't move on you. Tighten your set screw or your cap down at this point. Okay. Now on the, on the coil itself, find the camera, you're going to see it's touching the base. It's pretty low down. Same thing with this other one. What you'll do is you'll take your thumb, place it on the back side of the coil, like so. And then you're going to use your little flathead and you're going to pry on it. You're going to pry up. Just like that. And what it's going to do, it's going to turn your coil and it's going to make it horizontal. It'll flatten itself out. Sorry if I keep looking at the camera and then looking at my screen, looking at the camera. I just got to see what I'm doing. So you'll do it with both sides. And once you get a good horizontal coil where they're not touching the posts, it's another key ingredient. Don't touch the post, don't touch the base. Once you get them all situated, I like to pull my legs a little bit out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and do a test fire. See, as you can tell, one side's heating faster than the other. Means I need to tighten one of my caps down or something of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down just a little bit on each one. If you go too far, you'll end up clipping your wires off. Okay, let's try this again. A little closer. Let's do a little bit more tightening. And if it ends up not being the tightness of the coil, or tightness of the uh, set screws, then maybe the coil needs to be readjusted. And as you can tell, they're pretty symmetrical as far as my wires go. They're pretty far, you know, they're, they're spaced apart about the width of the, of the wire itself. That way you get sufficient burn, you get more surface area to, burn, to work with. Okay, with them resituated and retightened, let's try it now. Sorry, wife called, duty calls, you know what I mean? Okay, <clears throat> back to where we were. Got my legs kind of sticking straight up. Go ahead and do another test fire after I've resituated. Seem to be glowing at about the same rate. Getting pretty bright there. It's exactly what we want. Okay, with these legs, with the flat wire, you can actually sit and twist it. If you pinch the end of it and twist it, it comes right off. Or if you're using canthal, that's a lot harder to do because it's brown, it doesn't twist very well. Just go ahead and take your mini diagonal cutters and clip them off. 
or if this twisting doesn't quite work for you, you can go ahead and clip them off. That's no problem. Sorry, this can be a tedious process sometimes. Building is an art form. Keep telling yourself that. And for those of you that aren't subscribed to my uh, VG Clouds Instagram, it's easy as that. VG Clouds, all one word. I uh, I post a lot of reviews on Juice, a lot of reviews on mods, addies. I uh, do shout outs for you know anybody I know or anybody that that uh, tags me actually. If you tag me on, on Instagram, I'll go ahead and shout you out, toss your video on, get a little bit of rep going for you. For those of you that are, thank you, appreciate it. And, uh, a little bit over 500 followers right now. That may change here in a bit. Doing a couple giveaways right now. Uh, one of them is 10 feet of eco wool, which is kind of what I'm using right now to build this coil. Uh, also a two puffs drip tip gotta give a shout out to two puffs uh, their drip tips are incredible they're big bore you can drip right down through the middle and then also I'm giving away any 15 mil bottle of alpha vape alpha vape is a very potent flavorful vapor uh, it's smooth I like the flavor of the dude it's like pineapple orange something or other it's fucking delicious I can tell you that Okay, now that I've got those legs pulled off, you've got all this extra wick. Some people like to take the loops and flip them up and wrap them around. Me, I'm dripping all the time, so I'm going to go ahead and cut them all off. Um, I do custom builds for people where I will leave the loops on. Uh, I call them juice savers, the juice saver plus. Uh, that way you don't have to drip as often, but you know what, dripping's part of the fun for me. You're always getting fresh juice put on instead of an old Cardo tank or an old Atomizer Pro tank or something like that where your juice starts to uh, lose its flavor a little bit. Dripping allows you to have fresh juice on there all the time. Okay, when I cut them off, as you can tell, I go right by the base. That way you can still get your cap on without it getting in the way, but you still got a little furry friend there holding your juice for you. And I say furry friend because I build a, a custom quad coil using .6 flat rib and I call it the Shih Tzu. Because when you look at it, it's all fuzzy like a Shih Tzu. It vapes incredible and it lasts quite a long time because you're splitting, splitting your voltage between four coils instead of just two. Pardon me. Great advertising, isn't it? Okay. Now I've got it all cleaned up, as you can tell. Little furry friend right there. Nice little dual coil made of flat ribbon. Fire it off a little bit. Nice glow to it. So you kind of want to flick your, not flick your big, <laughs> flick your wick a little bit, kind of fluff it up. That way it holds juice in there a lot better. Okay, today I'm gonna to be using Epic Juice. I get this stuff from uh, Salt Lake Vapors. It's shipped out of Cali. They do an incredible job. It's 60-40 blend, so it's a little bit higher VG. I prefer 100, but with this being 60-40, it holds an amazing flavor. And this one's actually called Airheads. And if you're a fan of watermelon flavored Airheads, this is it, spot on. I'm actually pretty surprised on how good a job they did. So I'm going to put a little bit on the coils. I'm not going to saturate the whole wick quite yet. And then once a little bit's on the coils, you can test fire it a little bit. Great vapor production out of this juice. Uh, no thanks to an incredible build. <laughs> now you're going to saturate the wick. Get it just wet enough that it's holding a bunch of juice but not so much that your base is welling up, filling up with juice in the bottom. You can tell it's pretty saturated on there. Great vapor production. So at that point, you're gonna take your cap. Uh, a lot of you still are probably rocking the stock air holes on a cap. 
Sometimes that's okay. When you're using a cyclone, it comes with stock air holes that are massive. Uh, this trident, this is a real trident, it's not a clone. Uh, it does come with adjustable. So as you look at it, there are different, sh different sized air holes all along the edges. This one has been drilled out. It's been drilled out to 3 sixteenths. Uh, for a lot of you, that's way too big, but I am breathing a lot of air through there. So uh, a good starting point is 1 16th, then you can bump up to 3 seconds, 1 8th, so on and so forth. Uh, most of my friends, most people I help out and build their mods for them, they like the 1 8th. A, you know, a little bit of tightness in the draw, it's not so airy, but you do get sufficient amount of airflow. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cap on and place the air holes next to the coil. I don't know if you can really see this, but if you look, the air holes face the coil because that's where you want all your air flowing across. You don't want it flowing across the wick. You want it flowing right across that coil because uh, the way these work is uh, it'll sit there and it'll burn the juice off. And so you have heat coming off of the coil, but you want airflow to kind of cool it down, keep a happy medium of great vapor production without overburning. All right, now that we've got our coils built, got our cap on, I'm going to go ahead and put our top cap on because this, this trident comes in three pieces. The base, the sides, and then the top cap. And this right here is a two puffs tip. See, it's a pretty wide bore, and you look down in there, that's a big old fatty muffler right there. I like it because it allows you to drip straight down the tip. You don't have any problems, you don't have to pull your cap off, don't have to do any of that. So let's go ahead and take a couple rips off of this. Tastes amazing. It vapes great. It's not too hot on the throat. Um, and if you are vaping a higher nicotine level, it will be a lot harsher on the throat just because the nicotine does have a, a lot higher burning temperature. So that's that. Uh, feel free to ask any questions on the comments below. Go ahead and uh, email me, vgclouds at gmail.com, or uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'll, I'll be always posting cloud videos, reviews, anything like that. And if you have any questions, I'm always on there. I'm willing to answer anything you've got. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. And if you're a super advanced user, don't get on my sh page and talk shit. Else I'll come and I'll find you. All right, you guys. Bottoms up, man.